Hey guys, welcome back to Operation RV. So real quick, um, this is gonna be an update from my F100 rear axle flip. So if you guys haven't already seen the video, I'll go ahead and uh, have an end card at the end of this video. You can go ahead and check it out on my DIY on how I did that. Um, so real quick, this uh, video is gonna be an update because I made a slight uh, mistake here and uh, we're about to go ahead and get on into that. there in the picture I have some extreme negative pinion camber which I have to actually correct and I went ahead and uh, disassembled and reassembled measured twice already and there's no way around it I am actually gonna have to go ahead and get these welded uh, which is okay uh, I was thinking there in the beginning that I didn't need to but uh, I am gonna have to go ahead and get that done because under load it's just gonna keep shifting so uh, in this video, what I'm going to go ahead and do is get that done, but first I want to show you guys how I go ahead and make sure I got the correct pinion angle uh, using an angle finder, and we'll go ahead and get these perches uh, tacked on and then totally uh, welded up here shortly down in the video. Let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and use this angle finder here. The brand's called Just Tech. Uh, I picked it up, you know, from Amazon. I'll go ahead and drop a link down there where you can get it. Uh, fairly inexpensive and it's an amazing tool especially when I go ahead and get these uh, pinion angles located in, and found and most importantly it's got a good magnet base so you can stick this to your crank your drive shaft and your pinion so let's go ahead and get started all right so I'm uh, underneath the motor here looking up to the top of the engine bay and uh, what you want to do is go ahead and find your crank this is going to be the best um, a parallel area that will actually match up to your transmission tail shaft um, at the other end but sometimes depending on your transmission there isn't a level angle so this will be uh, tried and true to get your actual correct uh, measurement here so go ahead and find something that's pretty straight whether it's a, a ruler a level or something like that and your angle finder and we'll go ahead and take our first measurement and let's see, I was just out here a second ago and uh, it was right around seven. So let's see. All right. I'll go ahead and wait for it to clear out. And about 7.25 is what it looks like here. And, um, you want to uh, note that it's going down, down on the arrow. All right, so go ahead and put your angle finder there on your drive shaft and get a good reading, uh, 3.75. And you want to notate that it is going down. And again, we're about mid midway between the tail shaft of the transmission there and to the center drive line. Uh, go ahead and do a couple different measurements on your drive shaft just to make sure there's no debris. Um, make sure, you know, your drive shaft could have some sort of a dent or something like that on there. So just make sure you get an accurate reading. And now we're going to go down here to the rear uh, diff and get the pinion angle. All right, guys. So I got it set here on the pinion bolts. And we're going in between 6.95 and 7. So we're going to go ahead and roll with that with my, my pinion angle uh, right here and put these numbers in. All right, so we're on uh, Spicer's, uh, spicerparts.com and uh, I'm going to go ahead and input my pinion numbers here so I can kind of show you what my measurements are. Uh, right up here in front is how many different drive shafts you have. I have one, so make sure you have one selected. And then you have these three categories here. Uh, so the first one's obviously going to be your, your motor, which is 7.25, the drive shaft 3.75, uh, 
and the pinion there, 1.5. Make sure you click here up or down, uh, depending on whether or not what your slopes are, and those will be your two uh, operating angles. Uh, it's great to make sure you have it in between one and three. Uh, this is 0.5 over, uh, so what I can do is go ahead and just shim up my transmission a little bit, just so it's kind of within that spec. Um, as you see, uh, the rear um, is still in line with the U-joint, you know, having the between one and, and three degrees. Uh, but you can see my pinion is, uh, it's a lot different than my actual crank because it should be parallel. So uh, what I might have to do is take the jack how I showed you momentarily, and we're gonna put uh, some more degrees on there. So for example, it's 1.5. And if I can have it measured up to um, almost parallel, so let's just say uh, five, this is gonna change my whole um, operating angles right there. So I'm still within the spec. Uh, so let's, let's, let's see what we can do. Play, play around with these numbers, play around with this jack, get this pinion set. All right, so we got the jack here on the diff. We're gonna go ahead and keep those numbers there. And now we are on the uh, passenger side and I have the leaf spring perch. And so what we're going to do is in that hole where I drilled, it gets set right here on that. All right. So we went ahead and got the uh, pinion angle set correctly, which you guys saw the numbers up there. We got seven and a quarter on the crank, uh, three and a half on the uh, drive shaft and uh, seven here uh, going positive on uh, the diff. That way we got the rear diff and the crank parallel. Um, when I drop this down under load, since it is leaf spring, I'll still have my optimal between five and seven degrees. So when the uh, drive shaft does go under load on the pinion and I have a straight drive line, you know, heading down the road. So. This isn't a track truck, just daily driver, little pounds of boost. Uh, so what I have up here now is the spring perch. And uh, here on the back side, I'll see if I can show you guys. I went ahead and tacked it up, uh, tacked it up there. And so I went ahead and tacked this side using my Blue Demon 140. And then we'll get her welded all the way around and then head over to the other side. All right, so I went ahead and put the, uh, the U-bolts back on and uh, the, uh, the leaf spring plate and get it all cinched up now. And we should be good to go. I uh, went ahead and got that welded. Uh, they're not perfect, but it's gonna do the job. So I'm pretty excited about that. And therefore, it should limit now the, the differential roll, which I was experiencing. So before I had these welded on and I'd go to put it in drive and reverse, the uh, the load on the drive shaft would cause the whole rear pinion to become extremely negative, okay? So that was my fault on that, was uh, what I should have done was go ahead and get those welded up, like you see over there, that's tack welded now, because it would alleviate all of this. So again, guys, this is a, a learned lesson for me is um you know when you do research and forums say you know these do need to be welded go ahead and uh double check that before you get everything bolted back up because you know this is definitely um a uh a schooling lesson for myself so um we'll go ahead and go and look at some more measurements here um okay let's check it out Okay, so we got the U, uh, U bolts in on each side. Everything's set in properly. Purchase are all welded nicely. And I want to get some other measurements here. So we see there we got uh, four degrees uh, negative on the drive shaft going down towards the, the rear pinion. So let's check the pinion. All right, guys. So let's see if you can see that right there. Uh, we are doing 5.25 uh, with negative uh, pinion angle there. So let's go ahead, tabletop, and put these figures in. SpicerParts.com calculator. 
All right, guys, so I got all three of the inputs here added into spicerparts.com on the calculator section. So we got seven and a quarter on the, the drive member. We got four, 4.0 on the drive shaft, five and a quarter on the uh, rear pinion. So these two added together is your first operating angle at three and a quarter. And these two added together is the second operating um, angle. So it's still within the one and the three. I know I mentioned earlier about the three and a quarter. I'll probably have to shim the rear suspension just a little bit to make sure it's more in line with that spec. Uh, these two are off a little bit. They're not completely parallel because my vehicle is a leaf spring uh, vehicle. And so you have to compensate for uh, power under load. So once that load does, I guess, engage like it's supposed to, that uh, we should be in, you know, parallel within the uh, the drive member of the crank. So let's check them out. We are all good to go. Tires are back on, drop back down to the ground. I'm super happy. As you see, there's no more rear uh, pinion negative. That's substantial. And, you know, maybe could, uh, have something catastrophic happen down the road. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, remember also too, that the secret word is boost. Again, the secret word is boost. Hey guys, I'm glad you got a, a, a chance to make it all the way through the video. And this is the update of uh, dropping the rear here on blue. So definitely check this out. Look at the end card. You can also find my first video. Uh, at the end of this one too. Uh, please keep in mind that the secret word is boost. So please let me know that. And also too, uh, definitely check out spicepartscalculatorhere.com and you guys can get all your calculations and input on your opinion angles. So again, the uh, secret word is boost. The first person to reply back on this video in my comment section and is subscribed is the winner. So, uh, hey guys, like always, I appreciate you for uh, reaching out and checking back in with me. Please hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification if you also haven't already. And uh, drop me those comments, guys. And until next time, God bless.